The word paramita, and there's six of them, the word paramita means going to the other shore. Sounds simple enough. It's kind of a traditional uh, spiritual metaphor. You're sort of in one place and you travel to this other shore. The implication being that on this shore, uh, we're all messed up, and on that shore, uh, there's, uh, we're compassionate, loving, kind, um, uh, open-hearted, open-minded. Uh, we have tremendous equilibrium. Nothing throws us. I mean, we're, we're just like what we always wish we could be, right, on the other shore. <laughs> So traditionally they say this other shore is going beyond uh, um, dualistic thinking, which is to say going beyond uh, limited thinking, going on beyond the kind of thinking that gives you ground under your feet. So this is the interesting point. Getting to the other shore is not really the main thing. It's the journey of going from needing certainty and security, needing something to hold on to. It's the journey of, of beginning to relax with that, moment by moment as it occurs in our life, that um, begins to feel like we've arrived at a place where things don't, uh, at a place where we feel more open and more uh, brave. But actually, um, getting there is not the point. Because the spiritual path is not like a ladder that you climb. Rather, it's like a, a path that you explore everlastingly, forever. It's not, uh, the spiritual journey is not like a, um, a st state of being that you try to accomplish later. But it's, uh, it's paying attention uh, with this kind of um, tenderness and intelligence to uh, the ground under your feet. It's paying attention to this very moment, to the enlightenment that is right under your feet. So this idea of taking a journey to the other shore can be misleading. If you think of it as um, climbing a ladder or uh, leaving behind uh, all that is difficult and unpleasant, it's actually uh, taking right along with you all that is undif difficult and unpleasant. It's actually going right into the midst of suffering and pain. Because, right, that's where the help is needed, right? Our own suffering and pain suffering and pain of others. It would be nice if the way to uh, uh, really develop a tenderness and the ability to love and true compassion would be that we could just jump over suffering and pain. And secretly, when people start meditating or on any, uh, any spiritual path, you, that's what you're wishing for. That's why most of you came to this retreat. So it's natural, you know, that you think that I have this difficulty and that difficulty, and then um, by listening to certain teachings, applying them to my life, uh, developing certain practices such as meditation or whatever it might be, and um, applying them to my life, then those, um, then I won't have those problems anymore. But the idea here is to more an exploration of. A, a, uh, an exploration everlastingly of whatever presents itself to you. A kind of exploration is one word, but you could say a kind of everlasting curiosity about whatever presents itself to you. So diving right into fear, anger, loneliness, grieving, death, just whatever it might be, heartburn, 
<laughs> Ingrown toenails. <laughs> what one uh, Buddhist teacher calls bourgeois suffering. <laughs> when you uh, epitomize by uh, being on the airplane and you get an aisle seat when you wanted a window seat. <laughs> but um, but this everlasting curiosity, cultivating this everlasting uh, connection with curiosity about what's happening with your emotions and thoughts and what, what is going on, rather than a, a kind of uh, getting rid of or avoiding or tra even, even. So the word change doesn't sort of come into this changing ourselves because the idea of changing yourself is always that what you are now is not good enough and this is more starting uh, with what you have is good enough and then the training of the um, of the paramitas is this, this training in uh, steadfastness with oneself through thick and thin high and low, agreeable and disagreeable, some kind of steadfastness. This is the essential courage, is this steadfastness with oneself. And it translates into an, an amazing capacity to enter into more and more difficult situations. Being steadfast with yourself begins to translate into being steadfast with your world, being steadfast with other people. <laughs> <laughs>